Hello, Weirdos! I'm Pastor Darren. Welcome to your Daily Undead from the Church of the Undead. This is my opportunity to bring you into what I'm doing with my own daily Bible studies, or perhaps bring you a short message of hope and encouragement during the week, aside from the normal Sunday episodes. If you've not already subscribed, be sure to do so now so you don't miss future uploads. And please, invite others you think might also like the podcast. Tell them to visit WeirdDarkness.com slash church for links to the podcast, our Facebook page, and more. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. This morning, I was in a Bible study in the YouVersion Bible app called What Do I Need to Do to Be Saved? And today's message is entitled The Question of All Questions. I was really impressed with it, so I wanted to bring it to you. Are you curious about what it takes to be saved? What does it mean to have a right relationship with God? In this series of devotionals, we'll explore the central question that's been asked throughout the ages. What must I do to be saved? Our study will take us through Romans chapter 10, where we'll delve into the intersection of God's sovereignty and human responsibility regarding salvation. It's important to note that this question, what must I do to be saved, is not about earning salvation or trying to do good works to merit favor with God. Instead, it's about surrender and submission. It's an acknowledgement that we cannot save ourselves and that we need a Savior who can rescue us from sin and death. In Matthew 19, a young man approached Jesus and asked him what good deed he needed to do to gain eternal life. Jesus replied, telling him to keep the commandments, but the man persisted and asked what else he needed to do. In Acts chapter 2, we see a similar question from the people who heard Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. They were cut to the heart by the message and asked what they needed to do to be saved. And in Acts chapter 16, we encounter a desperate jailer who asked Paul and Silas the same question. These passages teach us that salvation is desirable. It's something we should seek. They also teach that salvation is a gift that we receive by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We don't earn it. We don't work for it. We simply trust in the finished work of Christ on the cross and the power of His resurrection. As we embark on this series of devotionals through Romans chapter 10, let's reflect on the question that we started with. What must I do to be saved? Do you believe that salvation is a gift of grace that we receive through faith in Jesus Christ? If so, how does this understanding shape the way you live your life? How do you reconcile God's sovereignty and human responsibility when it comes to salvation? Let's challenge ourselves to explore these questions to deepen our understanding of the gospel message. May we be inspired to live lives that honor God and bear witness to His saving grace. That's the first day of five days in the What Do I Need to Do to Be Saved Bible Study, which you can find in the YouVersion Bible app. And it ends with a Bible passage, Romans 1 through 21. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the Scripture says everyone who believes in Him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? 
as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long, I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. If you enjoyed today's message, or if you like the Church of the Undead in general, please tell others about the podcast whom you think might also want to join in. You can find the link to the podcast, our Facebook page, and more at WeirdDarkness.com slash church. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. Thanks for joining me, weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless.